Greetings. My name is Craig Lambert. I'm a hepatologist at Indiana University. I'm also the executive director for the Autoimmune Hepatitis Association. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Lauren Nephew, who is today speaking with us a little bit about unmet needs. Thanks for being with us, Dr. Nephew. Thank you for having me. So Dr. Nephew is a hepatologist and a colleague of mine at IU, but also a clinical researcher um, and she has really dedicated interests in liver outcome research. She also does a lot with health equity. Uh, so we're very proud of the work she's done, and we're really delighted that she's partnered with us, myself, but also the Autoimmune Hepatitis Association, to really look at a new topic in the field of liver disease, and maybe not so new for other diseases, but something called unmet needs. Uh, recently, we have uh, published a survey-based understanding of unmet needs for AIH, uh, that Dr. Nephew has actually helped to lead from our center. Um, so we were hoping maybe we could ask Dr. Nephew a few questions about the survey, but also just the idea of unmet needs. So Dr. Nephew, would you mind sharing with our members, what does unmet needs mean in healthcare, just generally speaking? Yeah, I mean, unmet needs really um, are um, patients not having what they need to have a good quality of life and a good healthcare outcome. And I think... As physicians, we often think if we fix the labs, that's all that's needed for a patient to have a good health outcome. But the more work we do and the more work we look at in other diseases, we understand that health outcomes are determined by um, people's symptoms, um, by their ability to get the information they need so that they can make good decisions, um, and also by their social determinants of health, which just means their ability to get to care, their ability to pay for care, all of these things um, impact health outcomes and I think are critical uh, for us to think about health holistically um, if we really want people to do well and feel well. Yeah, so that's really great. And you hit on a, a lot of key things. Um, let me ask a little bit of a different question. Why now? Uh, why, why is this such an important topic? Why weren't we thinking about this historically? I think we had a very um, limited idea as physicians about um, what impacted health, that it was just these clinical um, markers and blood tests and medicines. Uh, and I think um, we now just began to notice in other diseases that if we can fix people's fatigue, if we can fix um, people's nausea, if we can make sure that people have insurance um, and information that they do better, um, I don't, I'm not sure, I can't say what, what took us so long as physicians, other than we're stubborn um, and we're stuck on biology, um, but sociology um, is important too. Yeah, no, that's that's right. And I, you've kind of highlighted this, but I want to be very clear for our members, you know, knowing that AIH patients have already significantly less quality of life, which is also another buzz phrase, uh, but understanding quality of life in the spectrum of the entire piece of unmet needs. Why is it so important? You, you had alluded that maybe clinical outcomes could be linked to this. Anything you can state that, that helps support that or, or knowing that? I think patients know their body and they know how they feel um, and how they feel is a symptom of what's going on inside of them. And we know that those things going on inside of them, the inflammation, um, we know that those things are linked to health outcomes and patients feel that they feel um, and they're able to report that. So just like we can measure at AST or ALT or some other blood test to understand what's going on in the liver, patients can report <laughs> what's going on in their liver um, by their symptoms. And we found that they are equally um, as important um, as some of those biologic variables for understanding outcomes. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. Um, given your expertise, thinking in health equity, do you think that there are different needs for different types of patients, either by geography, location, or even by gender or race? Certainly. Um, I think that when I think about gender um, and some of the hair loss that's associated with some of the medicines that we give, um, that may not be a big issue for a man, but for a woman, for me, um, losing hair would be a big deal. 
Um, when I think about geography, um, if you're in a state perhaps that didn't expand Medicaid um, and you're unable to really get specialty care or unable to get budesonide or some of the more expensive medicines that we use to minimize symptoms and to treat disease. Um, so where you live um, could impact um, how you do. Um, and, and we know that um, the racial minorities and other um, uh, minoritized groups um, have different experiences of their disease um, and different unmet um, um, needs um, in terms of um, social determinants and insurance and things like that. And so I think that there's certainly um, from an equity standpoint, we need to understand these unmet needs in all of these different groups so that everybody has a chance at a good outcome and a good quality of life. Yeah, certainly. I think we, we've definitely now see there's another layer of complexity of on just knowing unmet needs, but but understanding per groups. So we're hopeful to learn more about that. What else do you think, uh, you know, that you'll learn about AIH patients in particular by doing a needs-based survey of patients? You know, I'm really interested in seeing which needs are bothering our patients the most. You know, um, what is it um, that's keeping them up at night? What is it that they're talking to their families about? Um, so that we can intervene on those things. I'm also interested to know what we're not telling them. What do they feel like they're not learning? What do they feel like? What information don't they have to really be agents of their own care? Um, and I'm really interested to know what barriers like transportation and um, healthy foods um, are preventing people from really having good care. How high is that? How many people that we see have those type of barriers? Um, and so I think if we can understand those things, we can intervene. Um, and that's ultimately the goal of this survey um, is to really understand what the burden is of these different unmet needs and then to think about what can we do about it? Yeah, that's really great, Lauren. And, and again, I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. We're excited to learn more about our patients and patients with AIH in general through this assessment. We think this could be really transformative for this community. So we really applaud your effort and thank you for collaborating with us as well. Thank you so much. I'm excited um, to be collaborating and to be able to begin to uh, find some actionable items. Excellent. And for those that are listening today, if you're interested in participating, there's a link right below this video. Again, thanks again for spending time with us, Dr. Nephew.